Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss four major movements at the hip, and that's going to be hip adduction and abduction, and then hip flexion and hip extension. We're going to cover all four of those in this video. So that's going to be two pairs of antagonistic muscles or muscle groups. The first antagonistic pair we'll look at is hip adduction versus hip abduction, which is facilitated by really one major muscle, the gluteus medius. So first for adduction. First, make sure you understand this is adduction with two Ds rather than a BD. This is adduction. And the hip adduction motion is facilitated by hip adductors. And there are a bunch of hip adductors that are going to lie on the medial side of each of the femurs. So we see here both femurs. We're looking at the anterior view of the body, of the legs. And we see that there's a bunch of muscles in here that are actually going to be your adductors. Okay. Some of the more important ones are going to be the pectineus, the gracilis, then we have the adductor brevis, adductor longus, and then the very large adductor magnus. And remember what hip adduction is. Adduction in general is moving uh, a limb toward the midline of the body. And so if you take your, your thighs, really your femurs, but your thighs, and you force your thighs toward one another, that movement is called hip adduction. We can look at an exercise that will actually facilitate this motion. Uh, this is actually the adductor machine that you would see in a gym. And what this guy is doing is he's actually forcibly moving his thighs close to one another. Okay? The hip has two motions there. It could actually move them apart or towards one another. And the, the act of moving them toward one another is actually hip adduction. And that's facilitated by these hip adductors. All right. Let's actually get a better look at some of these adductors. Uh, here's our program again. Um, in this case, we're actually looking at uh, the posterior aspect of the leg. Again, we can note that down here we have the heel and the back. Uh, but in any case, uh, these are your hip adductors, or at least some of them right here. Okay? Uh, this very large one, this is actually your adductor magnus. Okay? That's the largest of all the hip adductors. Okay? Um, some of them are going to lie a little bit more anterior, such as this one, the adductor longus. Uh, this longer muscle is actually the gracilis. Okay? And we actually can sort of see inside here a really small muscle, the adductor brevis. And by the way, when you see these terms such as brevis, longus, or magnus, magnus normally means the muscle's the largest. Longus, it's the longer one, and brevis, it's the shorter one. Brevis comes from the word brevity. It's, it's something like it's brief. It means it's short. So a, a muscle with the last word brevis is going to be a shorter muscle. But in general, all of these muscles are going to facilitate hip adduction. Okay. If we look at these muscles, we'll look at a couple of them, adductor longus and adductor magnus. What we see is that generally they're going to have their origin on the pelvis at the pubis specifically. There's going to be some variation, such as the large adductor magnus. It'll actually have an origin at the ischium as well. But what we'll see is that all of the adductors are going to have their insertion on the femur. Now, it's going to be different locations on the femur. Notice that we can have some that are more proximal on the femur, such as the pectineus, whereas some like the magnus can insert all the way down here on the femur. Okay? They insert all over the place. But each one of these muscles combined is going to move that femur toward the midline, or if we do both of them at the same time, move the femurs or thighs closer together. All right? That's the function of the hip adductors. All right. Now we can look at the hip abductor, or the gluteus medius. The gluteus medius, which is shown right here, we'll look at another uh, view of it in a minute, but the gluteus medius is going to be the major hip abductor. And so if adduction, with two Ds, if that's moving the thighs close to one another, then abduction would be spreading the legs farther apart. Again, we can look at another exercise right here. This is the abductor machine. And just like in the case of shoulder abduction, it's moving the, sh the arms, the humerus, away from the midline. Abduction of the, th of the hips is to move the thighs away from the midline. So moving the thighs outward, apart from one another. And again, the major agonist of this, mo of this movement is the gluteus medius. All right? Now, unlike the adductors, which are going to be on the medial side of the thigh, the gluteus medius is going to attach on the lateral side of the femur. Okay? 
Now, it's associated with the gluteal bundle um, on the posterior side, but it's actually going to insert more uh, laterally on the femur. Okay, Let's actually get a better look at that as well. All right, so here's our gluteal muscles. This one right here we'll talk about in the next part of this video. This is actually going to be involved in hip extension. This is the gluteus maximus. It's the most superficial of the three gluteal muscles. Okay, But if we actually remove the gluteus maximus, we'll be able to see the other muscles better. This muscle is the gluteus medius, but here on the, uh, the left side, they've removed the gluteus maximus, and we actually see the gluteus medius. Now, underneath, that's the gluteus minimus, which we're not talking about here. This is just the gluteus medius. And what we see is that it actually inserts more on the lateral side of the femur. Specifically, the gluteus medius is going to insert on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur. Okay, So we see that right here. And one way you could think about the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus is they're kind of like roof shingles. So you know with shingles on a roof, they don't overlap completely. Uh, but they do lie on top of one, one another. Um, that a, p a physical therapist I shadowed uh, actually told me that. But the gluteus medius, you can see, lies on top of the, of the minimus. Okay? But in order to really see it, you have to peel away the gluteus maximus. Okay? But this gluteus medius is going to facilitate uh, hip abduction with a B. All right? And again, with the gluteus medius, we can see that it's going to have its origin on the anterior surface of the iliac crest. Uh, notice here's our iliac crest right here. We see it having its origin there on the anterior surface, and then it's going to insert on the greater trochanter of the femur, okay? Posterior surface of the greater trochanter. For some courses, it might be sufficient just to say the greater trochanter, or in some cases, maybe even just the femur, if you're being really simplistic. But that's our gluteus medius. And so these two uh, muscle groups, or just muscles in the case of gluteus medius, are going to be antagonistic towards one another. All right. Now, remember, adduction and abduction, uh, generally speaking, those are going to be movements that generally occur in the frontal plane. But what about if we wanted to move uh, the femur in the frontal plane? Well, those movements are going to be flexion and extension. So we're actually going to shift gears right now and talk about hip flexion and hip extension. All right. And the easiest way to think about uh, hip flexion and extension is to imagine a frontal plane or a coronal plane. These movements are not in this plane. They're actually perpendicular to this plane, but we need to imagine a frontal plane, right? So it cuts our body into a front and back half. Generally speaking, any movement that forces the thigh to move in the direction in front of this plane, that's going to be a hip flexion. So for example, this guy right here who is throwing this knee, this is actually a UFC fighter, he's moving his thigh in front of this frontal plane. Okay, So in other words, for his left leg right here, he's actually performing a hip flexion because that thigh or that femur is moving in front of that frontal plane. It's going in that direction. Whereas for hip extension, this would be the opposite. If you did any motion or any movement to move the thigh behind this frontal plane in that direction, that would be a hip extension. So this girl right here who's doing glute exercises, you can see relative to her uh, back, her femur is actually moving more in the direction behind this frontal plane. Okay, That's going to be a hip extension. All right. Now back to the muscles themselves. The hip flexor muscles are deep muscles. Um, these are not muscles you're going to be able to palpate or touch directly uh, through the skin. They're going to be deep. And there's actually two of these. One is called the psoas major, and the other is the iliacus. So the psoas major is right here, and the iliacus is going to line uh, the pelvis right here at the ilium. Okay, it's going to line it, kind of sit in the, in the groove there. All right. And combined, both of these muscles are typically referred to as the iliopsoas. Okay, but they're two separate muscles. Okay, and these muscles are going to move the femur in front of that frontal plane. All right, so now if we consider the origin and insertions of the hip flexors, that is the iliopsoas as a whole, what we actually see is that the iliopsoas have their origin at the ilium and the lumbar vertebra. Okay, so what that means is that the part that has its origin at the ilium is the iliacus component of the muscle. And the part that has its origin at the lumbar vertebra we see is the psoas major. 
Okay? But they're ultimately going to insert on the lesser trochanter of the femur. Lesser trochanter. And so what that allows is when these muscles contract, they pull on the femur, and that actually moves the femur more anteriorly. And so ultimately that brings the femur in front of that frontal plane that we mentioned uh, just a minute ago. Okay. Again, we can get another look at these muscles. Let's actually zoom in right here. It's actually... These muscles right here are the iliopsoas, the hip flexors. This right here is the iliacus, both right and left. And what you can actually see is that it does, in fact, line the surface of the ilium, okay, of the pelvis. Um, and it will actually insert on the lesser trochanter, which is kind of hard to see. But you can actually see its insertion right here on the femur, okay, the lesser trochanter. Here we have the psoas major, and you see here there's actually a, a several uh, origins right here, several tendons that actually independently each attach to a different uh, portion of the vertebral column. But ultimately the psoas major is going to have the same insertion um, down here on the lesser trochanter of the femur. Okay? And like I mentioned, when these uh, muscles contract, when the hip flexors contract, you're going to actually bring... Uh, the femur in front of this coronal plane, this imaginary coronal plane, and that's going to be the process of hip flexion. All right. Now for hip extension. This, as I mentioned, was when you bring the femur more in the direction behind this frontal plane. And actually, this is a good exercise to actually strengthen those muscles. And the major hip extensor that we're going to talk about is the gluteus maximus. We already alluded to this earlier in this video. Okay, but there's actually several other muscles that are going to be important for hip extension. One of the other ones is going to be the hamstrings, specifically the bicep femoris, and then also there's a contribution from the semimembranosus. But we can just say the hamstrings in general. Okay, in addition to knee flexion, the hamstrings are also involved in hip extension, and there also is minor contribution from the gluteus minimus. But let's majorly look at the gluteus maximus here. All right, so we'll get another view of this. So here's our gluteal bundle. Here's our posterior side of the pelvis. Uh, this is the right side over here. And this very large muscle is the gluteus maximus. Now if we go and look at the, uh, the origin of the gluteus maximus, we see that its origin is the iliac crest, sacrum, and the coccyx. Okay? And we can actually see that here in that image. It's going to have here on the ilium right here but it's also going to have attachments on the sacrum and the co coccyx, which are not actually shown here, okay? And we see that it actually inserts down here on the femur. If we want to be a little bit more specific, it's going to insert on the greater trochanter, okay? Hopefully you can see that in this image right here. Now, the gluteus maximus arguably is the most important of the hip extensors, at least that we see in the gluteal bundle, but as I mentioned, the gluteus minimus is also important. So recall, if I remove the gluteus maximus, then I have the gluteus medius, which is involved in hip abduction, and underneath that, like sitting underneath like a shingle, we have the gluteus minimus. And the gluteus minimus is also going to be involved in hip extension as well. Okay? But by far, the major one is going to be the gluteus maximus, and there's also going to be major contributions from the hamstrings as well. Okay? And again, Hip extension, really anytime you bring the femur more in the direction behind this frontal plane, like this woman is doing right here. So hopefully these muscle groups make sense. Again, learn them as antagonistic pairs. We have adduction versus abduction, and then we have hip flexion versus hip extension. All right, hopefully you got a lot out of this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.